I just, I don't even know where to start. This is the Monport GA60. It is a 60 watt Galvo Mopa fiber laser. What does that mean? Don't nobody understand the words that are coming out of your mouth, man. When it comes to these desktop lasers, at least in my experience, you have two main categories, gantry and Galvo. Gantry lasers work a lot like a 3D printer or a CNC router. The entire laser head itself is mounted on a gantry system, and that gantry is able to move the laser head back and forth in either the X or Y axis, and it uses that gantry movement to create whatever shape you want with the laser. Then of course, there's Galvo. In a Galvo laser, that laser source is fixed and it does not move. So in a Galvo laser, instead of having that gantry system that moves the entire laser source around to create those shapes, you have a system of very small mirrors that actually reflect the laser beam itself all around the work surface. Now, there's a lot of benefits that come with this. One of them is speed. These things are fast. This particular laser can engrave up to 10,000 millimeters per second. The second really big benefit that comes with the Galvo system is precision. You can engrave incredibly fine details and the results are just so crisp and so smooth. What I've got here is just one of those aluminum business cards. The machine came with a whole little stack of them for testing. On this card, I'm gonna engrave five rows of text starting at five millimeters high and getting incrementally smaller all the way down to one millimeter in height. Here are the results, and I mean, honestly, I think they speak for themselves. This one millimeter text here, I don't even know if it's really gonna come through on camera. And even in person, it's difficult to read without magnification, but I can assure you that it is absolutely perfect and just buttery smooth. Of course, everything's a system of compromises and there's no exception to that here. And I guess the biggest constraint to consider with this type of laser is the size of the available work envelope. The size of that work envelope on this type of machine is predominantly determined by the focal length of the lens you have attached to the machine. This particular machine comes prepackaged with a lens that provides for a workspace that is 175 by 175 millimeters square represented here by this little piece of cardboard and i guess a few millimeters thick there is of course more to it than that you can change out the lens that you have attached to the machine for lenses of different focal lengths and different lenses will change all kinds of different properties of the beam that you're emitting through that lens some lenses will let you engrave a deeper some will let you engrave larger it all just depends on the work that you're doing and you know what you need to get the job done anyway like i said at the beginning of the video it's really hard to even know where to start because there is just so much more to the whole subject of galvo lasers and lenses but this video isn't about galvo lasers in general it's about this particular Galvo laser. So I think it's long past time we talked about the Mopa fiber laser source inside of this beast and what it can do. So the most important thing to know about fiber lasers, at least for us here in the hobby machine shop, is that these things operate on a wavelength that can engrave metal. Whether it's steel, aluminum, copper, brass, whatever you throw at it, this thing's gonna cut it. What I have here is a piece of 0.8 millimeter carbon steel. That's about eight thousandths of an inch thick. What you just saw was 100% real time. And I know that this isn't a super thick piece of metal. It's only about eight thousandths of an inch but don't for a second think that this is in any way the limits of what this machine can do. I just wanted to straight from the beginning, you know, instead of slowly working up to it and showing it at the end of the video, I wanted to show straight away that this machine is indeed capable of cutting metal. And in fact, it's actually pretty good at it. 
Here is the piece that was cut out right next to the hole and hopefully it's showing up on camera how just absolutely clean and crisp those lines are. All right, so we've proved that a fiber laser can absolutely cut metal. In fact, it's actually pretty good at it. So let's see what else this thing can do. Here I have a 16 gauge piece of brass. You can see here that I've already run a quick little test grid on it as well as this test engraving of a square. This square by the way is indeed engraved below the surface and if you can see it just try and take a look at the texture and color of the background of that square. That is just a nice looking effect. I have also imported a copy of my logo into Lightburn. Now, keep in mind that I am not an expert at using Lightburn, and I'm definitely not an expert at this laser, so we're just kind of winging it here. But you can see that different parts of my logo are highlighted in different colors. And that's because I have just grabbed different sections of my logo and then assigned those sections to individual layers that you can see over here on the right hand side of the screen. I have then assigned engraving settings to those different layers based on the results that I got in that test grid. The idea here is that by assigning different sections of this logo to those different layers with those different settings, I will hopefully reproduce those different effects resulting in a multicolored engraving of my logo on that piece of brass. Do I really even need to say anything about this? I mean, honestly, if you're telling me that that doesn't look absolutely fantastic, then I'm telling you that you might need to get your eyeballs inspected. And keep in mind that I was able to get this result after running a single test grid and honestly not really knowing what I'm doing with this laser. So that's the very, very basic gist of what a fiber laser can do. It operates on a wavelength that allows it to affect much harder materials like metal, different types of stone, and even diamond. However, this isn't just any fiber laser. It's a MOPA fiber laser. whoop de doo What does it all mean, Basil? MOPA stands for Master Oscillator Power Amplifier, which, I mean, sounds like English. All right, look, I'm going to explain it to you the way that it was explained to me on a website that I read. A MOPA fiber laser is sort of like a magic wand that lets you create any laser that you want. This was actually written on a website about lasers. So basically what that means is a MOPA fiber laser is almost infinitely adjustable, at least in terms of practical application. A normal Q-switched fiber laser, that's a non-MOPA fiber laser. A Q-switched fiber laser operates at a fixed pulse width of somewhere between 80 to right around 140 nanoseconds. And that laser can be output at a frequency up to right around 100 kilohertz. A MOPA fiber laser, on the other hand, has a completely independent and adjustable pulse width that can be set anywhere from 2 to 500 nanoseconds and can be output at a frequency from 1 to 4,000 kilohertz. Then, of course, you have all the other typical parameters like power and speed. With a MOPA fiber laser, all of these things can be set completely independent of one another. Honestly, we could spend like the next month and a half talking about this stuff. Like I said before, there's just a lot to it. But the simplest way that I have found to think about it is that all of this flexibility allows you to create exactly the amount of heat that you want and to put it exactly where you want it. And you can then reliably reproduce these results with 100% accuracy every single time. What I have here are just some examples of test grids that I made while playing around with it. And this is just a small sample of some of the different effects you can get by tweaking all those different parameters. And in terms of what's possible, this isn't even the tip of the iceberg. I mean, heck, I haven't even found the iceberg yet. To demonstrate this, I'm gonna make a keychain for my wife. By the way, I did not create the artwork for this file. I downloaded it from a link in somebody else's video. 
I wish that I could remember the video so that I could give them proper credit, but just know that this isn't my artwork. Here is the finished result, and I mean, I think it looks pretty fantastic. You can create colors on stainless steel with some diode lasers, but I have found the diode lasers to be just really inconsistent, and it's difficult to reproduce the same colors over and over again. This laser, on the other hand, I could make a hundred of these, and they would all look exactly the same as long as I'm using the same settings on the same material. I also made this completely random and not copyrighted in any way, little mouse, but he didn't come out nearly as well as the, what is this thing even supposed to be? A rat? <laughs> but for this, I just used the settings that came in the file and I would need to test and tweak them to get the best results out of my laser. All right, so I wanna do one more thing that I think kind of takes all this stuff that we've talked about and encapsulates in one really cool project what makes this particular type of laser so awesome, especially in the hobby machine shop where we primarily work with metal. Here I have just a blank brass coin. I bought a whole bag of them online for like 20 bucks. And with it, we are once again gonna make something for my wife. When I bought my very first lathe, the first thing that I ever made on it was a ring for my wife. And ever since then, whenever I get a new tool in the shop, I try and make sure that the very first thing that I do with it is make something for my wife. Side note, if you missed my last video, in it I made this hardened clamp set. I actually made these for my sign table, but as it turns out, they work really, really great for positioning stuff on this laser. Anyway, back over in Lightburn, you'll see that I have imported some artwork here. However, you'll notice that this artwork is made of all these black and gray gradients. That's because this artwork is a very special type of artwork called a depth map. And we're going to use a special setting called 3D Sliced. With this setting, we are going to create a 3D relief of this artwork in that coin. I'm not going to lie to you, this is going to take a while, probably a couple hours. So what I'm going to do is set up the camera for a time lapse, let it run until it's finished, and I'll see you back here when it's done. And here are the final results, which, I mean, in my opinion, like everything else that I've gotten out of this laser look just fantastic, especially considering the zero experience that I have. I mean, I have literally never done anything like this before. I just threw in some parameters, clicked the button and let it go. The laser did all the work here. Obviously there is optimization, refinement, and you know, a lot of learning still to be done on my end. But in general, I think the results pretty much speak for themselves. Look at how deep that engraving is, by the way. I don't know how well it's gonna come up on camera. I hope that you can see what I see, but this coin is an eighth of an inch thick and the engraving is probably halfway through the thickness of the coin. So it's a good 50, 60 thousandths of an inch deep. So I guess this has been a bit of a crash course on the Monport GA60 fiber laser. Personally, I am very, very excited to have this thing in the shop. I mean, if you're into hobby machining and metalworking and you're interested in lasers and incorporating them into your workflow, this is what you want, right? CO2 and diode lasers are fantastic for what they are. However, when it comes to working with metal, they're just severely limited in what they can do. That isn't the fault of any of those machines. It's just an artifact of the laser technology used in those machines. This thing, on the other hand, 
I mean, you've seen what it can do. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to have this thing. I am really looking forward to learning more about it and working with it and, you know, hopefully incorporating it into a lot more of my projects. So hopefully you're gonna see a lot more of this thing on the channel. I do have to mention though that, you know, this is a high-end machine and like anything else, you get what you pay for. And you're getting a lot here. On the other side of that though, in preparation for this video, you know, I've been in forums and Facebook groups talking to people just trying to figure out how to use this thing. And there are plenty of people out there who have built entire businesses around lesser machines. So, you know, there's two sides to every coin. You definitely have to pay to play, but there are possibilities and opportunities that come along with the functionality that a machine like this provides. Anyway, if you are interested in a machine like this, I am going to have an affiliate link down below. If you use that link, you will get a discount. So, you know, if you're in the market, go ahead, save yourself a few bucks, help out the channel at the same time, click that link. One last thing before I go, I need to give a couple of quick thank yous. First of all, of course, I want to thank Monport for sponsoring the video, sending out the machine for me to take a look at. Thanks to Monport for sponsoring the video. More importantly, though, I want to say thanks to you. Things like this would not be possible if it wasn't for you and your support. Giving me a few minutes of your time every couple of weeks to watch my videos and support the channel, that's what makes stuff like this possible. So thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I guess that's all I got for now. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one very, very soon.